JRPGs, that is, Japanese role-playing games, have been a staple in the gaming industry since the 1980s. With a plethora of new samplings to choose from year to year, there's never been a shortage of variety or options, but when looking to the roots of the genre, there is only one name sitting atop the throne. Dragon Quest. The original Dragon Quest is widely recognized as the first JRPG proper, and through the years its echoing impact can be felt across games, anime, and more, especially in Japan. In 1993, the game received a formal remake on the Super Famicom, packaged with its sequel, Dragon Quest II. Having found a tremendous love for the franchise over the past few years, it was finally my turn to give the first entry a chance with these quality of life changes to the 1993 remake brought to the table. The original Dragon Quest is as straightforward as it gets. The evil Dragon Lord threatens the land of Alephgard, and you, the descendant of the great hero Roto, are beseeched by the king to go forth and save the kingdom. The exposition here is fairly limited. The game simply tells you the scenario and then sets you loose, free to do whatever you want. The first several minutes of the game yield your typical JRPG experience, talking to NPCs, learning little samplings of lore, and eventually making your way out into the world to go on your quest. To this end, Dragon Quest is fairly straightforward. Walking along the world map, players can visit towns and, of course, fight random encounters. The original Dragon Quest has an interesting quality that is not typical for JRPGs. While later entries and other games will put the player into a party that fights together, the entirety of the first Dragon Quest is actually a solo journey. The hero shoulders these burdens alone. This quality also extends to enemies. Enemy encounters are always one-on-one -on -one bouts rather than an enemy party. This makes combat extremely approachable and fast-paced. It's incredibly refreshing to simply have a back and forth with one foe until eventually only one of you is left standing. With this also comes a very particular feeling that only works because it's a solo adventure. Typically, party members all would level up and have their own separate experience and stats. Because you play as this single character, however, progress feels very personal and linear. The hero's strength is your own strength, and experience fortifies the player in a way that feels like genuine progress has been made. Enemies that used to take several turns and healing after the fact are eventually felled in a single attack. Likewise, when the hero has no one else to lean on, the pressure of facing enemies before reaching that next place to rest is also a very concerning factor. Enemy types are varied, but ultimately it all comes down to a single question. Do you have enough strength and resources to overcome this foe, or will you be defeated instead? Chances are, if you stumbled into the wrong area, the latter will be waiting for you. This brings us to another one of the great strengths of this title. Dragon Quest doesn't brutalize the player for falling in battle. Video games are historically built to be challenging, and indeed, the player can be defeated, but rather than a game over screen, the hero is simply sent back to the starting location before the king, who graciously tells you that he will give you another chance. Aside from losing a bit of gold and having to walk back to where you died so you can continue your adventure, there's really no other consequence for dying. This doesn't mean there isn't a sense of urgency, but death doesn't ruin the experience or set you back several hours like other games might. I remember hearing the series creator Yuji Horii talk about this design choice in an interview, and how he wanted to make the game more accessible in this way. Being defeated just means going out and getting stronger through experience until eventually all of your enemies will fall before you. That said, there's no shortage of opportunity to go hang out in the area outside of a town and grind away at some enemies to earn more gold and experience. While most of the gameplay is your standard JRPG fare, there are a few nuances as well that stand out. Firstly, there are the doors that cannot be opened without the use of magic keys. These keys are one-time use items that must be found or purchased, and any door opened with them will need to be opened again with a new key if you leave the area. The magic keys are a somewhat arbitrary means of slowing down progress, but I find myself actually somewhat endeared to this system, even though it is wholly unnecessary. It puts an extra feeling of emphasis on the choice to open a door or not. Another mechanic is darkness. Caves and the like are dimly lit, and this means players will need to use a torch to expand their field of vision. When I experienced this for the first time, I suddenly was flung back to my youth when I first played Pokemon Red version. This is just one of many of these moments that made me realize just how prolific the impact of Dragon Quest is on the rest of the games that followed. When it finally comes time to save the game, the only option is to go back to the King, a visit that is often handed to you anyway once you are defeated in battle. Otherwise, you'll be going on foot or using an item or spell to fast travel back to the castle. Talking to the king also tells you how much experience you need for your next level. Music and sound in general are excellent in this particular title. 
Admittedly, everything's had the chance to be remastered, thanks to this being a port of the original game on next-generation hardware, but that doesn't change the fact that it's enjoyable to listen to. It's definitely catchy and memorable, the kind of thing that sticks in your head, and the sound effects that play between each different action, whether it's attacking, using magic, or entering into a dungeon, well, these sound effects have stuck around for decades now, so clearly they did something right. Additionally, the graphics in this game are also very nice to look at, and I make a very significant point to have chosen to play the Super Nintendo version, as modern re-releases of the title, particularly on mobile platforms, change the graphics in a way I personally don't like very much, so sticking with this classic sprite art was much more preferable to me. Sometimes simplicity is best, and you don't need to change what's not broken. Narrative progression in Dragon Quest is essentially tied to a series of fetch quests that allow the player to advance through the land of Alephgard. For each section of the game, the player must find certain items and then bring them to a specific location or NPC to progress further. This comes down to two different things, searching an area or defeating enemies. For the most part, these things can be figured out on your own by talking to NPCs for clues, though I did reach one stumbling point where I couldn't figure out where a certain item was hidden. This ended up derailing my journey rather significantly, but beyond that, the game is fairly approachable. With keys and torches also in mind, inventory management is fairly important in Dragon Quest as well. Equipment and key items will take up many of the important slots, so players will need to deposit items in the bank at times in order to prioritize what matters and be ready for anything. Another subplot within the game is that the princess has been kidnapped, which means rescuing the princess is also on the table. Doing so is important, as the princess gives the player an item that is absolutely essential for finding one of those late-game key items. When this fateful encounter actually happens, it's hard to describe how awesome it felt when the princess suddenly becomes part of your player sprite, implying that you personally carry her all the way home. As far as roleplay is concerned, there's little room for deviation. Sure, you could pick what kind of gear you'll use and you can impose personal challenges onto yourself, but the game is the same linear adventure no matter how you look at it. You could replay it if you'd like, but you'll be more or less just retreading the same ground and have the same overall experience. The feeling of walking in your ancestor's footsteps to defeat the great evil just as he did is very rewarding, and the game makes you feel important. Indeed, the hero is just that, a hero. This fact is not lost along the way. Little bits of lore and NPC dialogue give the world a feeling of life, even in such a classic experience as this one. The grand finale of the game brings the player to the Dragon Lord's castle, and of this section, I will not share too much. Instead, I'll simply explain that it's an enjoyable journey that brings you to the end of the hero's quest. Dragon Quest is a tremendously short game by JRPG standards. It's the kind of title you can finish in under 10 hours, which also makes it feel incredibly accessible for a weekend tryst. Getting stronger and eventually being able to take down any enemy is a very satisfying experience, and while the journey will be over before you know it, it is better that it doesn't overstay its welcome. For those who want to experience the game that started it all, I can't say there's a good reason not to. It's fun, it's simple, and it's the game that definitively changed the medium forever. Go forth, Scion of the Hero, and restore peace to the land. Thanks for watching my review of the original Dragon Quest. All of the Dragon Quest footage you saw in this review was actually captured from my live stream over on Twitch, with my gaming channel there, Standby Gaming. So be sure to check that out and give me a follow if you'd like to hang out with me while I stream other games. Beyond that, you can also catch archives of that stream on my alternate channel here on YouTube, also titled Standby Gaming. If you've enjoyed this review, please go ahead and leave a like and let me know what you thought of it in the comments. I greatly appreciate getting the chance to read them. Until next time, this is Stanpai. Thanks for tuning in.